Hi, I'm Michael Curry, President and CEO of the Massachusetts League of Community Health Centers and a member of the National NAACP's Board of Directors. It is an honor and a distinct privilege to join you today for this 51st annual celebration of the Dr. Martin Luther King Breakfast, as well as recognition of the breakfast's first keynote speaker, the late Congressman John Lewis. Last year, I joined over 1,500 of you in person to receive the powerful remarks of Bishop Michael Curry, the 27th presiding bishop and primate of the Episcopal Church, no relation. He reminded us with a biblical lesson that when love is behind every law, America will be great. But little did we realize that morning that our lives would be so significantly disrupted and impacted by a pandemic just a few weeks later. Little did we realize that we would witness the murder of a 46-year-old black man, George Floyd, in Minneapolis just a few months later, when Officer Chauvin placed his knee on Floyd's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. It took a pandemic and being forced to stay at home and pay attention while sheltering in place, consumed with the constant breaking news and the anxiety of contracting a disease to give us 2020 vision, to ignite a movement for justice and health equity. Then came the news of the murder that took place in March that resulted in the senseless killing of Breonna Taylor. I want to introduce you to a term called the weathering effect. The weathering effect, as researchers presented it to me, they used the example of asthma, where they went in and asked black parents to rate their kids' asthma from one to 10. And mothers like my mother rated asthma four or five. Then the doctors came in and evaluated those same kids and they were eight, nines, and tens, and they introduced us to the term, the weathering effect. What that meant was you can get so used to using the pump every day, like I did. You can get so used to being in the emergency room once a month or once a quarter that it becomes your normal. You become weathered to being sick. You become weathered to being discriminated against. You become weathered to being stopped by the police. You become weathered to being mass incarcerated. So I asked the question this morning, what are you weathered to? Are you weathered to the impacts of this disease? Close to 100 million cases worldwide and fast approaching 2 million deaths. Close to 23 million cases just here in the US with close to 400,000 deaths. That's close to the entire population of Tampa, Florida or Minneapolis, Minnesota, equivalent to all, over half of the Boston population. Over 428,000 cases right here in Massachusetts with over 13,000 deaths. Are you weathered to that death? African Americans are two to three times more likely than white people to get COVID-19. Just as we were more susceptible to the Spanish flu in the spring of 1918, just a few decades out of slavery while under the system of Jim Crow. Right now, we are preparing for the economic tsunami that will drive even more businesses in, out of existence, send more families into homelessness and food insecurity, result in even more loss of wealth, devastate savings and credit scores, and lead to even more Americans losing their homes and their apartments. We also know that the magnitude of death is great. Job loss, social disruption that could have been avoided if we had not defunded our pandemic response if we hadn't politicized mask wearing and social distancing, if we had just trusted the science and not those who have forced us to prioritize livelihood over lives. We also realize that COVID-19 infection and deaths are disproportionately higher in communities with larger black and brown populations. This is appropriately referred to as our national Katrina because we should have known that far too many black and Latino Americans live in poverty in neighborhoods with overcrowded households, are victims of environmental injustice and still have inadequate health care. Over 55 years to the day that Dr. Martin Luther King stood at the convention at the Medical Committee of Human Rights in Chicago and said, of all the forms of inequality, injustice in health care is the most shocking and inhumane. If you are an African-American viewer of this program today, you've undoubtedly heard the saying, when white America catches the cold, black America catches the flu. So I ask you, 
What happens when white America catches COVID-19? It exacts a greater toll on black and indigenous people of color. And during this economic recession, we are desperately losing our businesses, our relatively low wealth, our access to a quality education for our children, our homes, and quite frankly, our lives. Combined with the racial reckoning that was forced by the murder of George Floyd and the tens of thousands of protesters who took to the street proclaiming, I can't breathe, no justice, no peace, and demanding that we say their names, as well as the resurgence of white nationalism and overt racial and anti-Semitic hatred reminiscent of 1915 with the violence associated with the release of the racist D.W. Griffith film, Birth of a Nation. Many of us feel like we're suffocating from America's backlash to the Obama years. But this too is America, a country where hundreds, if not thousands, sought to overturn a free and fair election by sacking the U.S. Capitol in attempting to prevent the certification of the electoral college vote. This too is America. So right now as we sit here celebrating the life and legacy of Dr. King, a message around healthcare is critical. Right now, black and brown citizens are infected and dying of COVID-19. And what is your, our responsibility? One, we have to embrace the vaccine. We know that we have Moderna and Pfizer and other vaccines coming online very soon. And that black and brown citizens have a hesitancy around taking a vaccine and we understand why. We know about Dr. Marion Sims and his experimentation on black female slaves. We know about the taint of race in our healthcare system dating back to reconstruction in the early 20th century. We know about the Tuskegee syphilis experiments and the unethical uh, experiment that did not provide care to African-American men for decades. We know about the Institute of Medicine's report in 2002 that validated what many people in our community have been saying about doctors don't treat us the same, unequal treatment. We know that many black and brown citizens have been denied health insurance which meant that we got our medical care in the emergency room instead of our primary care from a doctor. We know that history, and that history contributes to why we're reluctant to take a vaccine, but I wanna encourage you. I wanna introduce you to Dr. Corbin, the young African-American woman who was a part of the team to discover the COVID-19 vaccine. I wanna introduce you to the many doctors and, and scientists and researchers across the country who contributed to this moment of a solution, a cure for COVID-19. We have to embrace the science. We have to, to trust where we are in medical advancements because our lives depend on it. We have to wear a mask. We have to social distance because we're losing our lives. Thank you.